Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a lovely Wednesday morning um, or whatever time you're watching this. Um, yeah, I wanted to hop on here and share with you guys a little something that the Lord is teaching me. Not just a little something. It's kind of rocking my whole world. Uh, but yeah, it's something that I am actively uh actively like in the moment still processing and trusting the word to learn and to understand um but yeah before we hop into the study i wanted to kind of introduce myself um if i've never had the opportunity to meet you uh my name is jj harper uh, that's a new name to me. I became a Harper like a month and a half ago. So I got to get married to my very best friend in the whole wide world, Seth Harper. And uh, yeah, we've both been at Midtown for several years now, for about five or six years. Um, and we are a part of the college and young adult ministry. Um, we get the privilege of leading Bible studies. We get to disciple. Um, we just get to be a part of what God is doing at 40th and Walnut. And it is such an exciting place to be, honestly. Um, we love our church family and um, yeah, we love you guys. And yeah, it's just such a privilege to, to get to be here. Um, so yeah, let's like hop in to the word because that's why we're all here. Um, and yeah, I want to kind of open up with a passage that, uh, the Lord just laid on my heart. Um, I guess it was a couple of days ago now. I just woke up thinking about this passage in John 11. Um, and I was thinking about it because, um, if you uh, don't know our ministry over the past couple of days, we've had members in our ministry that have lost really dear loved ones. And um, yeah, I, I've i just felt heavy hearted over that. And I've been really just coming before the Lord and asking him what it looks like to, to bear that with people and what it looks like to grieve with people who are grieving, what it looks like to weep with those who are weeping. Um, because I don't know if that's something that comes supernaturally to me. Um, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> like it doesn't matter if it comes very naturally to me because, um, the Bible is very clear, um, that we get the privilege to comfort those who are hurting, like the members in our body who, um, are hurting. Like we get the privilege to be a part of serving them and loving on them and just being with them and sitting with them in their grief. And um, so I woke up thinking about this passage and I'm just going to read a portion of this um, pretty familiar passage. But uh, in John 11, um, starting in verse 30. Um, so the context of this passage, right, is that um, Jesus gets word that Lazarus is sick um, and he waits two days before he starts to head toward Lazarus's town. And by then he finds out that Lazarus, not finds out, I mean, obviously the Lord knew it was going to happen, but he gets word that Lazarus um, has passed away. And so he's going to mourn with uh, his family, with Martha and with Mary and um, the rest of their family that was gathered around to grieve this loss. Um, and so he has an interaction with Martha where he tells her, like, this is what I've come to do. Like, I'm come that you might know that I'm the resurrection and the life. Um, so he has this interaction with Martha and then um, he has this interaction with Mary. So in verse 30, um, it says, Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where, he, where Martha met him. Then the Jews, which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out followed her saying she goeth unto the grave to weep there then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying unto him Lord if thou hast been here my brother had not died and when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. 
Jesus wept. And when the Jews, and then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of things that the Lord had really laid on my heart in regards to this passage. Um, just the word compassion has been like leaping off the page everywhere I've been reading. Um, we've been going through the gospel of Mark as a Bible study. Um, and just all over the gospels, you see Jesus, um, moved with compassion and he's he's healing um, and moved with compassion for people that um, don't have leadership these sheep without a shepherd you know Jesus is constantly being driven by compassion driven to those who um, who need compassion who need ultimately Jesus um, and some things that I've just been learning about compassion. Um, I think one of the definitions that has been sticking out to me the most is that compassion is just, is loving deeply. Um, and Jesus here, you see such a clear display of his compassion. He loved Martha and Mary deeply and he loved Lazarus deeply. And so to see them grieved at loss, um, Jesus, he, he weeps and he grieves at this loss and at their brokenheartedness over this. Um, you know, Jesus doesn't come in and he doesn't give a bunch of, um, he doesn't even say a bunch of things. Like he just, he comes in and he sees them grieving and he says, where have they laid him? Like, let's go grieve together. And, um, that I think has been something, a passage familiar to me, right? Like I, I've read this before, but I think in light of watching so many of my friends go through such a hard season of loss and grief, like I feel like I'm reading this passage with fresh eyes saying like, Lord, teach me how to do this um, because I I feel so inadequate for the job, you know, um, I, Jesus teach me how to have this level of compassion, uh, for my family who is grieving. Um, and so as I've been just kind of sitting with this passage and processing and thinking about, um, and trusting God for compassion, he's been showing me, um, what are some hindrances to compassion and therefore, um, being used to serve, and to grieve with those who are grieving. Like, what are some things that hinder that? Um, and the first thing that the Lord was showing me um, was pride and hard-heartedness. Um, those are basically the literal opposite to compassion. Um, you see this so clearly in Mark 3. Jesus um, is in the synagogue and there's this man with a withered hand and the Pharisees, um, they, they're coming, just looking to see if they can catch Jesus in the act doing something he's not supposed to do on the Sabbath. He's not supposed to be healing um, on the Sabbath day. And they're so caught up with how to catch Jesus in the act um, that they're not even seeing like with the right heart attitude, the miracle that Jesus is doing in front of them. He's saying like, is it lawful to, to save life or to kill? Like, what do you, do you even see what I'm trying to do here? Like you're completely missing the picture. Um, because their heart, because it says in that passage that Jesus was grieved at the hardness of their hearts. And so because their own hearts were hard, they could not have compassion toward this man that needed healing. Um, and, and their hearts were hard and they missed out on the opportunity to be a part of this incredible miracle that Jesus was doing. Um, they couldn't even see it for what it was. Um, they were so blinded because of their hard hearts. They did not have um, compassion for this man who needed healing. They were caught up in, in the rules and the, the legalism of it all that they couldn't even actually see this man has a need and oh my gosh Jesus is here fulfilling that need um, so something as I've been processing this myself is you know do I have hard-heartedness are there places where I've hardened my heart to um, to the Lord are there places that um, I have maybe uh, have some sort of missed expectations somewhere? Have I chosen to harden my heart um, 
in various ways and therefore I'm not able to actually like have compassion on people because I'm so focused on myself and I'm so proud and just thinking of myself um, that I can't even look on and see somebody else's need um, because I'm just focused on myself and my heart is hard. And so that was one thing the Lord was showing me and asking me. And then the second thing that is, uh, I was just seeing as a hindrance to compassion is insecurity and fear. So maybe it's, you don't find yourself in the first category. Maybe it's not that your heart is hard toward the need. Um, but maybe it's simply that you're insecure and you're afraid um, and you don't know how to help. You know, like you see that there's this need. Um, I have a friend who is hurting, who is suffering, and I can see that and I want to help, but I'm insecure in how to. Um, I don't know the right thing to say. I don't know the right thing to do. What if I do this and it makes it worse? Or what if I say this and it makes it worse? You know, like I think we can not just me, I'm completely speaking for myself here, this is the thing that always trips me up, is I get kind of stuck in this place of insecurity when I see this opportunity to serve and to help. Um, a lot of times I can get stuck in insecurity and thinking about like the worst case scenario of, oh my gosh, like what if I try and do something and it just makes it worse, you know, or I say the wrong thing and I upset them or you know, I'm just thinking about myself. Again, it's just a self-focus. I'm just thinking about how this could turn out poorly for me. And that is so backwards <laughs> to the whole point of what, is, what Jesus is trying to get across here. You know, I, I just feel like this is the thing that constantly keeps me from moving forward in faith and actually trusting God to be used um, to be a blessing to those that are in need is because I am just afraid and I'm insecure. Um, and so I think when we come back to this passage and we look um, at, you know, we've seen what can hinder us having Jesus's heart here, but what do we actually see Jesus doing here? And again, kind of like I was referencing before, he didn't, he didn't say a lot. He didn't even do a lot. He just went to where they were and he sat with them and he wept with them, you know? Um, so what are some things that we can take away from Jesus's example and trust him for in moving forward um, uh, toward having a more compassionate heart um, to, to grieve with those who are grieving? So, um, yeah, I, I think some sometimes the best thing that we can do is just is just go to people where they are and to to grieve with them. Um, now, you know, I again, like I am saying this as somebody who is still actively working through being afraid to do this sometimes or a lot of the time. Again, because I'm just thinking about myself, which is so wrong. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, like sometimes that's what God's asking you to do is to physically go to them and to sit with them in their mourning and mourn with them, weep with them, don't say anything. Like sometimes that's what Jesus is asking us to do. Um, but maybe there's an instance in where that wouldn't actually be the best case scenario. Maybe that person needs space and it's not the right time for that. Um, so we need to pray and we need to trust God for discernment and sensitivity um, from his Holy Spirit for the specific needs of the people in our body. So maybe in this instance, it's not the right time or it wouldn't be um, as helpful or beneficial for you to physically be there. Well, what are the things that you can do even if you're not physically in the presence of somebody who is grieving or mourning? Um, prayer, like you can weep with that person in prayer. This is something that the Lord has shown me so much. And I think this is, is, has been such a huge transformative work happening in my heart is getting to just weep in prayer, um, on like car rides, <laughs> drives to work, drives home from work, just like actually praying for, um, the people that this, this loss has affected or that this situation has affected. Um, so our, if we can't maybe go physically weep with that person, are we weeping in prayer with them? Um, praying God's promises and comfort for them. Um, yeah. Or are there other just really practical things that you can do? Like, 
that can maybe help lighten the, lo the, the load, you know? Um, if there's a meal train available, can you sign up and take a slot? Can you send, you know, an Uber Eats credit or whatever it is that we can do, um, even just to meet a very practical need, like, can I pick up your laundry? You know, like, are there, are there things that we can do again? I'm not saying like, oh yeah, I like constantly am like asking my friends if I can do this for them. Like, these are things that I have just sat down and processed. Oh, these are things I can be asking <laughs> like people in my life who are hurting. I can ask them if I can help serve them in these ways, um, and see needs and just trust God to be the person to meet those needs through, of course, the power of his Holy spirit. Um, I think it's just a verse that whenever I'm thinking about service and when I'm thinking about um, grieving with people, a verse that the Lord just brought to mind um, is in Philippians 3, and look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Um, so as we're trusting God to be sensitive to the needs of our body in this time, what are the ways that we can look not just on our own things, um, not just on our own hard hearts, not just on um, our own fears or insecurities about serving and helping and being used in the lives of people that are grieving, but um, yeah, Lord, how can I think on the things of other people? I think this is such a an incredible opportunity to learn how to get the focus off of ourselves and to put it on to those who need it, um, who need our, um, our time, who need our prayer, um, who, you know, maybe it's time to send that, uh, verse you've been praying for that person. Um, but yeah, we, we obviously, again, we want to be sensitive. We don't want to overwhelm, but we also want people to know that, that they're loved, um, and that we love and care about them. And so, yeah, I, this is something again, like I'm saying, I'm sitting down right now and, 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 you know, shouting to God, God, I don't know how to do this. And unless like your Holy Spirit is, you've set me completely aside and it's your Holy Spirit that I'm yielded to, like, I won't ever really know how to do this. You know, I'll only just be focused on myself, um, and miss out on the incredible blessing that it is to serve people that you love yeah man thank you guys so much for um taking a few moments um to sit and to uh yeah just sit with me and what i'm learning um yeah i pray that if you too are learning this please reach out to me um you can um yeah, send me an email or a text or a phone call or come stop me at church or whatever. And um, yeah, we can just pray and trust God to learn how to grow in this together. Um, but more importantly, let's just be praying for those that we know who are going through a difficult season, going through maybe a difficult loss or a difficult circumstance. And let's trust God to pray for them. And then let's trust God to see um, if we can be used in any way to meet a need that they might know that they're loved, um, deeply loved. Um, so yeah, I hope you have an incredible day.